My name is Kurt Manel, and I'm a senior solution architect with Loft Labs. Today, we're going to talk about the cluster. We're going to discuss the tools and setup for creating ephemeral Kubernetes environments for GitHub pull requests. There was a talk by some CodeFresh employees at last year's KubeCon in Amsterdam entitled How We Securely Scaled Multi-Tenancy with vCluster Crossplane and Argo CD. The approach they presented is very similar and inspirational to the approach taken in this presentation. Many of the ingredients are the same, however, the biggest differences are the vCluster platform is used in place of CodeFresh's internal platform for this example. And while you're able to buy the vCluster platform, the CodeFresh, the CodeFresh platform is not for sale. The crossplane Helm provider is not used in this example. In the case of the CodeFresh example, they use the Helm provider to create the tenant vClusters and to deploy the Argo CD to that vCluster. For this talk, the vCluster platform uses a virtual cluster instance along with crossplane, along with virtual cluster templates to create the vClusters and the Argo CD instance. Finally, for this talk, the crossplane composite resources will include resources in and outside of Kubernetes. For the CodeFresh talk, Crossplane composite resources are only created in the one Kubernetes cluster. Note, Helm is used in this example under the covers. The vCluster platform actually uses Helm to install virtual cluster instances from virtual cluster instance CRDs, and a vCluster platform app template is used in this example to deploy the Argo CD Helm chart to that virtual cluster. The primary ingredients used for this example are vCluster, in the vCluster platform, Argo CD, and Crossplane. And of course, GitHub, since the whole point of this talk is to show how to create quick to spin up ephemeral Kubernetes environments for GitHub pull requests. For a properly configured repository, every properly labeled pull request will get a dedicated ephemeral Kubernetes cluster with a dedicated and ephemeral instance of Argo CD to deploy the application code for the pull request branch. We already have a management cluster in place with its own Argo CD along with Crossplane and the vCluster platform. This talk will not explore how to bootstrap that management cluster. However, the management cluster used for this talk was itself created from the vCluster platform virtual cluster template. I don't want to assume that everyone watching this knows what a vCluster is, so I'll provide a brief overview of the vCluster architecture. vClusters are fully certified CNCF Kubernetes clusters that run as a pod, or more specifically as a stateful set in the namespace of the host cluster. B clusters have their own Kubernetes control plane that consists of a dedicated Kubernetes API server with a data store and a controller manager and a core DNS server. By default, the vCluster does not have a scheduler and instead relies on the vCluster syncer to sync certain workload resources to and from the host cluster namespace where the vCluster is running. For example, pods must be synced from the vCluster to the host cluster to be scheduled with physical resources, CPU, memory, and storage for the pods. And vCluster services are synced from the vCluster to the host cluster as they rely on the container network interface of the host cluster. But other resources like CRDs, for example, do not have to be synced. <clears throat> why vClusters? So I just wanted to get this out of the way up front. Why use vClusters and not just use namespaces? Namespaces are great, but they definitely have their limitations when it comes to multi-tenancy and boundaries for individual Kubernetes clusters. It certainly wouldn't be easy to provide a dedicated instance of Argo CD, especially if they're different versions, for every pull request with namespaces. Also, by using vClusters, we'll reduce the load of the Kubernetes API server of the underlying host cluster. So vClusters allow us to increase workload of the host cluster while reducing load on that host cluster. Isolated like separate clusters, different versions of controllers like Argo CD can run in every vCluster and the host Kubernetes cluster. vClusters are fast to launch like containers because a vCluster Pro instance is just one pod. They spin up very quickly. And vClusters are less expensive than running multiple physical clusters. You can consolidate part of the shared platform stack like an ingress controller. So you don't have to install that ingress controller in every single vCluster, reducing physical infrastructure and reducing costs. First ingredient, Argo CD. <clears throat> We're going to leverage Argo CD application sets. They really make managing Argo CD uh, resource generation uh, very easy at scale, especially for something ephemeral like a GitHub pull request with an application set pull request generator. The application set pull request generator <coughs> will create a new and unique Argo CD application resource for every pull request of a repository, even allowing you to filter on certain properties of a pull request, like labels to only create an Argo CD application resource for specific pull requests 
The example for this talk will use a custom GitHub pull request label called create-prv cluster. Application sets also allow you to templatize the application resource contents with information from the pull request, like the commit shot and the pull request number. This example uses two different application sets. The first application set is deployed to the Argo CD instance of the management cluster and will create an Argo CD application resource for every pull request with the custom label. The generated application resource will leverage a cross-plane composite resource and composition. The second application set is deployed to the ephemeral Argo CD instance and will deploy the application code of the pull request. Finally, Argo CD notifications are used to provide contextual information for the developers working on a pull request. The deployment status and pertinent links can be added as comments to the PR and commit checks. <clears throat> Crossplane. The crossplane set consists of three composition resource definitions. One, a vCluster instance resource definition, two, a GitHub webhook definition, and three, finally, a PR vCluster resource that combines those. These cross-plane compositions, th three cross-plane compositions that map to the composite resource definitions, utilizing two cross-plane providers, the Kubernetes providers used to create the vCluster from the vCluster platform virtual cluster instance, and to create multiple Kubernetes secrets, one for the vCluster platform for providing SSO with the thermal Argo CD instance, <clears throat> and two secrets needed for the repository webhook resources. The GitHub providers used to create the two webhooks for the thermal Argo CD instance. Finally, a simple PRV cluster composite resource and example GitHub repository will be used with and be modified by the Argo CD application set to generate the Argo CD application resource that will in turn trigger the creation of everything discussed above. GitHub. GitHub app authentication is used for the Argo CD notifications, application sets, and application resources. Uh, it's used for the cross-plane GitHub provider to, to create the Argo CD webhooks in GitHub. Uh, we also use a, a custom pull request label in GitHub to, to use as a filter on the Argo CD application set. GitHub action workflows are used to build and push the container image for the example application to a GitHub container registry. vCluster. The vCluster setup consists of quite a bit and includes the vCluster platform running in a vCluster, yes, vCluster inception, vCluster apps that provide a simple parameterized template for managing how much arts Kubernetes manifests and even a bash script as part of a virtual cluster template, <clears throat> a virtual cluster platform parameterized virtual cluster template that includes template parameters, the Kubernetes version that allows using different versions of Kubernetes for different Kubernetes for different pull requests. You don't actually have to use the same Kubernetes version as the underlying host cluster. A repo name, which is passed to the parameterized bash script that will dynamically generate a repo specific Argo CD application set and notification configuration. This allows the templates and corresponding apps to be used across multiple GitHub pull requests and multiple GitHub repositories. The two apps consist of a parameterized Helm-based app for installing the uh, Argo CD Helm chart into the vCluster. Parameters are used with that to generate dynamic ingress hosts. <clears throat> a parameterized bash script app that will wait for the Argo CD CRDs to become available and then install the application set for deploying the example application and the Argo CD notifications configuration. The vCluster configuration that, among other things, enables the syncing of ingress resources, allows the use of a host cluster ingress controller along with wildcard DNS entry and insert. So we don't need to waste cluster resources by installing an ingress controller in every vCluster. Uh, we also have two Kubernetes secret objects that are created that utilize the vCluster, a special vCluster platform label to dynamically pull the data from the secrets for a vCluster platform project secret when the vCluster instance is created. The secrets include an image pool secret for the example application to pull container images from a private GitHub container registry and a GitHub app credential seeker to be used with Argo CD. And finally, sleep mode is configured that will automatically scale the vCluster instances, pods, workload, and control plane to zero when there's no Kubernetes API activity and or ingress activity for the specified number of minutes. So even if a developer doesn't get to the environment right away in a pull request, it'll sleep and not cost you as much money. All right. So now that we have an overview of what's happening, let's do a quick demo. <clears throat> First, here we have the vCluster platform and API framework project where we're going to deploy the ephemeral vCluster for our pull request. You'll notice it's not there yet. 
Next, we have uh, the webhooks in our example repository. These are the webhooks for the, the management cluster. We'll revisit this uh, screen after uh, we trigger uh, the creation of the PRV cluster. Uh, then here we have a PR um, with the uh, necessary label to create dash PVR, PRV cluster. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and create this pull request. Um, once we create that pull request, we are going to trigger a job to generate the application set will generate that application resource um, that will trigger the deployment of <clears throat> that composite resource, that cross-plane composite resource to the management cluster. Uh, here you can see um, the triggered application set generates an Argo CD application that in turn modifies the PRV cluster cross-plane composite resource with a name prefix and by injecting the GitHub pull request number. Next, we see the actual generated application. Uh, we see the pull request number there. We see the name prefix. This information will then be passed on to the virtual cluster template that we can use in the different apps and to configure everything downstream. Uh, next, we have uh, the vCluster here is actually starting up in the vCluster platform. And here is a diagram of the PRV composite resource showing the vCluster resource, the OIDC secret, and the GitHub webhooks for the ephemeral Argo CD instance. Here now we can see back in the vCluster platform that the, the, the ephemeral vCluster is up and running and you can see that it's using that pull request vCluster template. <clears throat> Next, we go back and we look at our webhooks and we see that we have two brand new webhooks that were created for us by that composite resource. If we go back to our pull request, we can see that it's been modified by the notifications to include a vCluster. A link to the vCluster platform, um, the Argus CD link and a link to the deployed application. Here, click on the link back to the vCluster platform will take us to that ephemeral vCluster's list of pods. We see all of the pods for Argus CD. And then we also see the example hello app pod down at the bottom. Next. But we have the uh, login for the, um, the link to Argo CD, and you can see here that we're logging in through the vCluster platform. And here we see our example application successfully deployed in Argo CD. And if we go back over and look at our pull request, we decide, okay, everything looks good. We've either run some tests or we've done manual testing, um, looked at the UI, etc., and we're going to go ahead and merge our pull request. Now we can see <coughs> back in Argo CD that our application resource is being deleted. In the vCluster platform, we can see that our application, that the, v, in the v cluster, the ephemeral vCluster instance is being terminated. Now, if we go back and look at our webhooks, we can see that everything was taken care of for us. The webhooks are, are cleaned up. We don't have all these dead webhooks laying around in GitHub in our repository anymore. So, in summary, cross-plane can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. And although there seems to be a decent amount of documentation, there does not seem to be a lot of easy to follow examples. And it was easy to get stuck on some things like resource dependencies between different providers. There are a lot of moving parts being managed by different tools from Argo CD to Crossplane to the vCluster platform. If something isn't working, it may be challenging to root cause it. The GitHub provider is fairly limited. And for the pain involved in forcing the webhooks to be only created after the ephemeral Argo CD instance is up and running, it may it makes alternative just using polling from Argus CD not seem that big of a deal. The solution printed is not free, as in free beer. Although Loft does offer a free version of the vCluster platform, the free version does not support all the features demonstrated in this talk. However, when everything's working and you see everything get created and then quickly disappear once the pull request is closed, it almost seems magical, and it's fun to see in action. Thanks a lot.